Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays Anise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post the videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So as the title says above, this is going to be my August book haul. I always get this confused. This is going to be my August book haul. And um, I'm actually excited to share with you guys all the books that I got. Um, th there are a lot of books. A lot. Um... I have a good mix though. I have some fictional books. I have biblical fiction books. I have my obviously my non Christian fiction. And then I have some books for my son. Um and just to just keep in my children's library, if you will. So I'm gonna take a sip of my orange shoes real quick. But let's get into this. So I'm gonna start off with the children's books, then I'm gonna go into my non fiction and then we're gonna do Christian fiction. And none of this is probably gonna be in order, so yeah. Okay, so the first book that I have for you guys is from, who is it from? B&H Books. I think these first few books are actually, actually all of these books are from B&H Books, which is funny. Um, some of these I got through Lifeway when they had their summer reading program for the children. Um, I put my son in that, so he got some books from there and then also from the review program as well. So... I'm going to try to remember where everything is from, but I'm probably not going to remember. So, um, the first thing I have here is this Slugs and Bugs story by Randall Good Game, illustrated by Corey Jones. This is Are We Still Friends? Um, my son and I actually just read this book to each other last night, I think it was, and he loves the story. It's a sad story, but he loves it. Um, and I just love reading books to my son and then allowing him to sort of read the story to me. He can't really um pinpoint words for words but he listens to me and in him reading the story back to me I know that he's listening to me because he'll repeat some of the things and then when he's looking at the images he'll create a story around it so I did haul the first one um a, a while ago which is who will play with me and he enjoyed it so much so now we have both books the next book <laughs> I have two copies of because I got one from the um summer reading program that I put him into and then the other one was from the review program but they're the same book so i have two copies of the same book um but it's the great lemonade standoff by art rayner and here's what that looks like and it's literally just a tiny little comic book and there's three books apparently um there's two other books on the back if you guys can see but don't they just look so cute in their little suits they just look so stunning and um it's the adventures of the secret slide money club and there are little images in here which are so cute so i will be giving the other copy away because i i don't think i need two copies of this like so cute so two copies don't need both copies so i'm gonna give one copy away and keep one for my son okay the next book is the great and small prayers for babies looks just like this my, my son and i read this um he is a toddler he's five years old but he still likes reading books like this um, and it works for him to be able to pinpoint sight words and little small words. So he actually enjoyed this book. Um, it was funny. It's a cute little flip out book, obviously for babies, all about praying. And, um, yeah, this actually goes with the great and small Bible that I have for the kids, which I think I still need to do a review on that Bible. I have my, I have two copies, um, one to give away and then one for my future kid. Cause I do plan to have another child sometime. Um, but yeah we have this little cutie patootie so cute the next book is also going to be another one that's for like toddlers and this is my little words devotional um it's discover 19 little words from god's word i haven't gone through this with him yet but um it starts off with creation as a word it goes through let's see kindness i would assume it goes through the fruit sorry you guys if you heard that banging praise so cute so just little things, um, love. So you get the word, a little Devo for it, that's for kids, obviously, and then a tiny little prayer. At the back of the book, they give you, um, a parent connection section, which basically kind of helps the parents to use this book. So we have this one. The next thing he has is the coloring and activity book, but it's called Bible Man, which I think is so hilarious and so cute, but it's a coloring book. And, um... My son loves to color. He loves to draw. That art is something that he really loves, which I'm glad he loves art. Um, my son is very artistic, musically, 
drawing wise like he loves those type of things which runs in my family so that's awesome but um yeah i got this and i thought it was so cute um like i said there are activities in here that you can do like mazes and crossword puzzles he probably isn't gonna do those but um the fact that this is like biblically based i thought it was super cool i he does have another like larger size coloring book from B&H books which he loves but um I just thought this was super cute because it's like a superhero and my son loves superheroes and Avengers and stuff like that so Bible man just yeah and he did get this from the um summer reading program that Lifeway was running so he got this the last three books are children's books but geared towards the older children so this first one is a non-fiction um book and it's by Scarlett I can never pronounce her name her there um, she is the author of Afraid of All Things, which I do own that book, but it's her. Um, and it's called The Pores on My Face, Hottie List, Clogged Pores, Eating Disorders, and Freedom from It All. And it's geared towards younger girls, which I think is great because it's the stuff that younger girls do deal with. Um, so, yeah, Christian nonfiction for younger girls. The last two items are by Priscilla Shire, which... <laughs> You guys know how I feel about Priscilla Shire. I love her so much. If you don't know who she is, she is the author of Fervent. If you still don't know who she is from that, she is the daughter of Dr. Tony Evans and the sister of Anthony Evans. Anthony Evans is a Christian um, gospel singer. And, I mean, Dr. Tony Evans, do I have to explain who he is? <laughs> but um, if you still don't know who she is after me telling you who her father is, her brother is, and what book she wrote, then you should know her from War Room. Cause she played elizabeth in that movie and she also was in the movie overcoming that recently just came out so i mean if you don't know who she is you need to get up to speed just playing <laughs> but um yeah i have two of her books from her um prince warriors series so i did get a chance to get winter oh gosh what is it called winter war see my book is way down here and i can't look but um it's the prequel to her prince warrior series i'll put the cover here but i did get that a while ago um for review from bnh books but through the lifeway program um the reading summer program they, they had they had these two books available got them so we have the second book in the prince warrior series and it's the unseen invasion and this is a series i definitely want to read it's middle grade um fantasy sci-fi ish i don't know if it's sci-fi but i don't know it's fantasy um and i really just want to read it and my son is you know a boy he's into stuff like that so i'm hoping when he gets older um we can read this together i don't know if this includes any images no this is strictly just reading there are no pictures in here oh now there are little cute little art works throughout um but nothing insane and massive but um you know i'm excited to personally read this myself i do own the ebooks for all of these but i really just want all the physical copies of them so i do have now the second book and the prequel i still need the first and the third book and on the back of this, there is a bonus pull-out poster inside. So let's flip to the back. Oh, I can't really open it right now. But um, it's in there. So I'm not going to open it. We're going to keep that in the book for now. Okay. But we have that. Then I have the Unseen Prince Warriors 365 devotional from her, which is basically the devotional version for the the trilogy she has written out and first of all i love this because it has deckled edges if you guys don't know what deckled edges they're kind of like those page edges that are like uh layered in a sense they look like that really old and rustic type look i like it and i love the way this just it just feels old to me um but it's literally just a devotional and the way she has it set up is um I like that she doesn't have dates on this. She has it numbered by like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 365. But they're not dated. So this is like devotional 213. You get your title, your scripture focus. You have your recon, which I think is cute that she uses words like that. Because like that's really what guy, like little boys are into. Um, and then she has your actionable intel. So the recon would be your little devotional section. And then the actionable intel would be something that you can do to apply the devotional to your life apply the scripture to your life or just journal about so um i do want to get my son into journaling and some of the re um some of, some of the actionable intels have scripture that she would require you to read so i think that's great um to get children involved in actually reading the word of god and what i like is that each little icon at the type ha at the top has to do with the armor of god so here's the helmet here's the sword um here is you know, the feet shot with a uh, piece. <laughs> um, what else? The hands. So, like, they all have different little symbols, which I think is cute. Some of them have two symbols. 
So I'm pretty sure she explains it in the beginning. I haven't. Yeah, she does actually. So you have the belt, the breastplate, the pair of boots, the shield, the helmet, the sword, and prayer. And some of them are paired together. And she explains what each icon is for. So this is something I definitely want to um, incorporate somehow on my channel for younger kids. Because I know I do get some younger kids that do watch my channel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to incorporate this somehow on my channel soon. And the last children's base book that I have is from a company that I actually enjoy working with. And the publishing company is Shadow Mountain Press. Or is it... Sh I no, Shadow Mountain Publicate Publishing. I don't know why I always say Shadow Mountain Press. But it's Shadow Mountain Publications, Publishers, however you want to say it. Um, and I have been working with them now for a few months. I love their books. I get a lot of them, their children's books and a lot of their like clean contemporary romance novels because they're awesome. I'm not sure if this company has any type of, um, connection with, you know, being Christian or whatever the case may be, but I do find that their romance novels are very clean. I find that their children's novels are always interesting, so I am incorporating those books on this channel, so I apologize if you guys are looking strictly for, like, Christian-based books, um, but I do want to incorporate some of my clean romances on here because I feel like it's nothing wrong with reading, um, fantasy and romances at all um especially if it's like a clean one it's perfect to read but this one is the one that my son and i have already read and it's so cute um it's by brandon mall and it's called smarter than a monster a survival guy and it's illustrated by mike walton and um the illustrations in this book are so cute like my son and i fell in love with the illustrations from the moment we opened up the first page and i'm going to show you guys the illustrations are dope like literally um they're dope and what this book teaches you is basically it uses monsters um because obviously most children are afraid of monsters monsters under the bed monsters in the closet but this book is basically helping your child um actually learn to clean their room learn to keep themselves clean hygienically um by using monsters as like a thing and i know it sounds crazy the way i'm saying it but like okay let me find a page that would help you understand what I'm saying because I know what I'm saying probably sounds crazy to somebody so here we have this scene here where the little girl is trying to go sleep with her parents and the, with her father but the book is basically saying that um, monsters are not under a children's bed they like to stay under the parents bed and this it sounds crazy but what I get out of this is that it's teaching kids as they get older they cannot sleep in the bed with their parents right so then you go onto this page and you see the little girl sleeping in her own bed by herself with no monsters around. So it's saying that she's safe when she's in her own bed. It is a little crazy and trippy the way they're saying it, but um, I like it. Then in this one, they're comparing a dirty <laughs> child to a clean child. They're saying that monsters think that clean children stink, whereas stink children smell good to monsters. So in essence, it's telling you to make sure you stay clean. Um, it's funny. It's comical. My son loves it. I love it. And um, in reading this, I make sure that I'm explaining things to him as I'm reading it. Um, but overall, the illustrations in this is just, oh, you guys cannot tell me that this cover is not gorgeous. So yeah, we have this. Okay, so now moving on to my Christian nonfiction, and um, this first book I have here is a book that I literally waited for about two months for. Um, you guys know that I work with Moody Publishers with their blog program, um, and it's an awesome program. I love the program. However, for some reason, it took me about two, three months to get this book. I did email them, and normally when I email them, they email me right back, but they never contacted me, so I thought there was like something with the program, or maybe they were on hiatus. I don't know, but um, the day that I recorded my September Reads and Studies, um, with the July and August wrap up, I received an email <laughs> that was saying that my book was being shipped out. So that was funny because in the video, I was actually saying how um, I needed to contact them, and I did, but they didn't respond. It and then, then I got the email stating that they would be <laughs> shipping it out. But um, it is the Mom's Guide to Lies Girls Believe by Donna Grush. This is from the Lies We Believe series by Nancy DeMoss Wilgameth. You guys know she has the Lies Young Women Believe. She has Lies Women Believe. Her husband also wrote one for men, which is Lies Men Believe, but um, this is the mom's guide, and it is the guide to this book, which is The Lies Girls Believe, which I have read, and I enjoy. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, if I'm not mistaken, but um, great read, and this would be the mother version. It is a little bit thicker, if you guys can tell. It's a little thicker, but um, this one is to be more, is, is basically a more in-depth version of the younger girls one for um, moms to be able to understand, because there are a lot of things that I know for a fact that when you're speaking to um, your parent, your parent sometimes does not understand. I know that from personal experience. 
Um, and I'm sure that my son is going to feel like that as he gets older um, and we begin and he like begins to really fully talk to me and his dad about different things he's experienced in life. And um, my my son's father and I definitely do want to have more children. We want to definitely have a baby girl if possible, um, God willing. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's things like these when it like books specified to parents that are based on books for younger kids i feel like are essential and this one literally it goes through the actual chapters of the book so these are the these are like pages from the actual book but on the side there are little tips and tad bits for the mom to read um then there are specified chapters obviously for the mother but um i really really like that they include this um so now i have the duo i don't think i'm going to read this though fully because I read this so I might have to just like breeze through this and read the sidebars just because I've already read this book so I feel like I'd be reading this book a second time if that makes sense but we have that this next book I got from pump up your books yes it's called pump up your books I think it's a blog store company um I worked with this I've worked with this, this company for a while her name is Dorothy and um she's a wonderful woman and she does a lot of blog tours to help um, a lot of authors out, be it from big publishing houses or people who just create their own books and sell them on Amazon and things like that. And um, I've, I've been working with her for a long time. And I saw this book on there, and it's a Christian-based book. Um, and I it just sounded really interesting because I'm very into this topic of God taking your mess and turning it into a message, him taking your pain and using it for purpose. Um, him taking your trauma and turning it into triumph. So this book is called Unbraided. It is by Carla Monterosa. And it's Transform Your Pain to Power and Purpose. And um, it just sounded amazing. And more so because this deals with, if I'm not mistaken, it deals with um, sexual abuse. If I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. I believe it does though. From what I was reading when I signed up for the blog tour. Um, but I'll just read some of the chapters off. Yeah, it does deal with abuse. So it talks about, um, sexual abuse. It talks about emotional impacts, darkness revealed, the residue that, you know, abuse leaves behind, sexual rebellion. Then it talks about marriage, how the past can be surfaced, motherhood and your memories from the past. She goes into Hebrews chapter 10. There's a leap of faith. Um, and it's done in different parts. So you have the part one of what happened and who I became as a result, which is like her story. Um, part two is how he healed and made her new by inviting healing, trusting God, and um, choosing to walk with him. So, yeah. It just, it sounded really good and something that I would love to read. Obviously, you guys know I've dealt with sexual abuse before, um, molestation, rape, and all that. So, I thought it would just be something great for me to personally just read for myself um, and to see if I could grab anything from it to use for myself um and to see what kind of scriptures and stuff that she uses um I'm, yeah she definitely has scriptures in here which is great you guys know how i love about my how i feel about my christian nonfiction books with scriptures i love it um and there's prayers as well so i'm interested in getting into this okay guys so the next book i got was a gift from my uncle and my aunt they're really not my uncle and my aunt but i've always called them my uncle and my aunt um you guys know that i was recently ordained as an evangelist Whew, still nerve-wracking um, I get nervous, like, when I go to church and they be like, evangelist, I'm like, oh no, because my mom is an evangelist as well. So, when they say evangelist McElvin, we just be like, um, which one? Because now we're both evangelists. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, my, a lot of the people from my old church came and they were the ones that I really wanted there because they were like, I, they, they've known me since I was a baby. They've grown, they've seen me grown. And then the ministry that I'm at now, I've been at for the 10 years that they have been called flight to freedom worship center um my church has been open longer than 10 years because they had a different name previously um but i've been in the ministry since they've been called flight to freedom worship center and they have impacted me in like the best way to get me to where i am so like the ordination service was like really special to me because i had like my first church there um that like really helped me and then i had my main church there who really got me to where i am now so yeah but my uncle and my aunt came. I call them that. Like I said, <laughs> uncle and aunt, I don't care. Um, they they have done so much for me, even down to when I started my freshman year of college. They came to my college campus, took me shopping to get things for my college dorm. Like, I love them so much, like, so much. But um, they got me a book. 
and I love it so much. I talked about this book and I think it was Land of Silent and then I mentioned it in my September reads and studies but it's the Hooper's Evangelist uh and Minister's Handbook. Everything You Need to Know Before You Go by Deborah C. Hooper and this book is so good. I haven't picked it up as much as I wanted to recently just because you guys know I have so many books that I'm reading but um I'm gonna say this again. I said this in the last two videos. Every evangelist is a minister but not every minister is an evangelist so what she did was combine the two together because if you're an evangelist you're automatically a minister. Um, just like every pastor is a minister, every bishop is a minister, like, it is what it is. You're a minister. Everyone is a minister. But, um, you know, things like that. But this book goes into depth, focusing more so on e being an evangelist and evangelism. Um, and she goes in on the business side. And when I say business side, I mean, like, having your biography done, what it should look like, um, how it should sound, having business cards. Um, if you do honorariums, having your honorarium, um she talks about what is it what else where is it um headshots um your attire that you, you should have outside of your like regular ecclesiastical i think that's how you said the word attire um she talks about different bibles and stuff that you should have in your library working on your sermons public speaking what i really like and i'm really excited to dive into is chapter three which talks about the different types and spheres of an evangelist um and that's something that i never really ever thought of honestly just thought an evangelist was an evangelist honestly but um you have your public evangelist your private evangelist and then your local evangelist you have your inerrant evangelist you have your part-time you have your full-time evangelist you have prophetic evangelist healing evangelist internet evangelist which is something that i would be part of um is the internet evangelist because that's what i do over youtube is i evangelize the gospel through youtube um you have your aspirant you're licensed, you're ordained, and there's just a whole list of things. So she has your travel checklist if you choose to have um, an armor bearer. What that should be about how the ministers work with um, the music ministry, transportation when you're doing lodgings, um, health issues. She focuses on stress and depression and then you building your personal devotion. Which this book for me is like, huh? honestly, because... It's nerve-wracking and it's a lot of work, but um, it's so much fun, honestly. And when I say fun, I just mean that um, stepping into this role has not been easy, you guys. Like, I still have my part four coming from the whole um, ordination ordeal with my final thoughts on, like, the ordination night, how I felt, and how things have been going. I'm just waiting on my Bible. My first lady had to take our Bibles because she has to sign them. And I still haven't got my Bible back yet, so I don't want to make that video and then do a separate video with the Bible. Even though I'm going to do a separate video reviewing the Bible, I just want to do that with everything. So I'm waiting on that to get back so that I can make that video. But long story short, I got this as a gift. Moving on. Um, the next book I have was one that I got prior to the ordination service because I knew that I was going to have to start working on sermons. And this just sounded really, really cool. Um, so it's Letters to My Students, Volume 1 on Preaching by Jason K. Allen. And it's a biblical accessible guide for ministers and ministers in training. And um, Dr. Allen serves as the president of Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary and Spur Spurgeon College. So um, it's just all about preaching. And I'm going to assume writing and preparing sermons. At least that's what I'm assuming. Um, there is no... Let me see. Is there like a chapter? Yes. So preparing to be a preacher. Preparing your sermon. Um, growing in your preaching. So, yeah. Something I need to work on. So the next five books I got are from Baker Publishing. And you know Baker Publishing has like the different branches. So you have like Bethany House, Baker Books, Chosen, Rebel... I don't remember what the other ones are called. Bigger Academic, I think. But um, I have five here. Four are from Rebel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And then the this one is from Chosen. Let me make sure. Nope, I'm lying. Four are from Baker Books. They got so many divisions. But um, the one from Chosen is Becoming a Next Level Prophet by Jennifer LeClaire. Um, and it's an invitation to increase in your gift. And um, it just sounded interesting, honestly. I'm not going to lie. That's the only reason why I requested it. It sounded interesting. The next four books, like I said, are going to be from Baker Books, also from Baker Publishing. The first one is Welcome to Adulting, The Survival Guide, 42 Days to Navigate Life. Um, this is a 42-chapter book, if I'm not mistaken, it's 42 chapters, right? 
yes, 42 chapters. Um, and I did haul another one of his books before. I think it was called Adulting or something like that. Um, but we have this one. This is a survival guide version of that book, if I'm not mistaken. And it's kind of like a mini devotional in a sense. It's not broken down into days. It's broken into chapters. But at the end of every chapter, there are questions. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Ponder, Practice, and Pray. So this would be like a mini devotional style version so yeah, I still haven't read Adulting yet. I need to get on that. I'm way behind on my books. Way behind. Way, way behind. But I got this so that when I do read that, then I can dive into this as like a Devo read. So yeah. The next book that I got is Pray Big Things by Julie Jeffrey Sattler. And it's The Surprising Life God Has For You When You're Bold Enough to Ask. And it's about prayer. can't really remember much about this book outside of it being about prayer so moving on next is called faith for exiles by david kinnaman and mark matlock this is five ways for a new generation to follow jesus in digital babylon and you guys <laughs> this is insane to me honestly because it when i hear faith for exiles i think of grace for the rebellious um and it I don't know it just blows my mind um the God that we serve and how loving and graceful and everything that he is but um it just it sounded really really good I'm gonna read the back so it says negative discover what's working and find hope negative perceptions church dropouts prodigals and nomads it's easy to become discouraged by all that's going wrong when it comes to christianity and the emerging generation yet what's going right in fact signs of hope are springing up all around in faith for exiles um the author of unchristian and you lost me unveils major new barna research that uncovers what's working five practices that contribute to resilience into the world of resilient young adult christians learn how they are sustaining their faith Finally, you can find hope in all that God is doing among young disciples today. And honestly, it just, it blew my mind. Just the title alone and everything. So, the chapters include, if I can get to that, um, practice one, which is forming a resilient identity in experience intimacy with Jesus. Practice two is complex and ancient age, develop the muscles of cultural discernment. Practice three is forging Forging meaningful and intergenerational relationships. Practice four is um, ground and motivate an ambitious generation, train for vocational discipleship. And practice five, sorry, is curb entitlement and self centered tendencies by engaging in countercultural missions. And yeah, it's just honestly the title is what got me. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Then we have MOM um, by Christy Clover. And MOM is actually an acronym for Master, uh, Master Organizer of Mayhem. You guys can see Master Organizer of Mayhem. And um, it's simple solutions to organize chaos and bring more joy into your home. I'm a mom. If you don't know, I do have a five-year-old son. And he's in public school now. And he has a lot of toys. And I have a lot of things to deal with. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Um, honestly, what got me was the colorful Legos. My son loves Legos. So, yeah. And um, this just seemed like a, a great book to have. Because um, my family and I, we are moving um we're gonna be moving to a bigger place and my son will have his own room so i want to be able to just think of ways to have his room organized and clean and things like that um and this book seemed to have some really great ideas so that's why i requested it the last five books are from waterbrook and mount noma publishing waterbrook and mount noma is uh the combination of like two publishing companies together so you have waterbrook and then you have mount noma but they're always called waterbrook mount noma together so yeah um i have something needs to change by david platt a call to make your life count in a world of urgent need it's from mount noma um honestly i don't remember what this book is about i'm not gonna lie i've had these books sitting here for a while so i don't remember half of what half these books mean and i don't want this video to be too long so we have this next book i have is an arc of um may it be so it's 40 days with the lord's prayer by justin mcroberts and scott erickson you guys know i did a 40 day prayer challenge and i loved it and i definitely do want to do another one um next year most likely probably at the beginning of the year i'm probably gonna plan for another one and i just thought this would be a good book to read um just because i feel like the lord's prayer is something that we all know um but we don't fully dive into studying it so i do have a bunch of books that are surrounded around like 40 days of praying with jesus and um 
also 40 days of like just the lord's prayer and really breaking it down so i'm excited to dive into this um and yeah it's so cute this is like such a tiny book and it's like the pictures in here are so cute they're like little tiny prayers and they say prayer at the at the like the bottom of the page so um it's not this massive over the top book but um it definitely goes through the actual like prayer from um the lord's prayer so yeah we have that okay so the next book i have is jesus day by day by shan case lunis um yeah we that name right there i shared this with you guys in my september reads and studies i have not started this shit yet but i will be diving into this just because i'm going to be studying acts for the month of september i know in my reads and studies i said that i was going to stick with joshua mark and um psalms but apparently god has been pulling me to acts and now i have a reason to study acts because my church is studying acts starting today today is tuesday as i'm recording this video so my church starts back on bible study and they're doing acts and then bsf which is bible study fellowship is diving into acts this month and then i had to study acts all in july and august because uh i needed to learn more about being evangelist and um evangelism in general so i just feel like there's a strong pull to just study acts so i'm gonna read all the ones that focus on acts in here let's actually see if i can find those Hmm, yeah, Axe is away in the back, so it starts like in November. Mm -hmm. So Axe would like start in November. So it's like witness to the world, the Axe of the living God, the Stephen style, great joy, the gospel within our walls. So it's, um, oh, humility, what else, what else? History lesson, let freedom ring, be a Baryan. I don't know what a Baryan is, but apparently that's a a place Bera, Berea, I don't know, <laughs> but um, yeah, so we have this devotional, I'm gonna read in parts and review it before it comes out on the 17th, the next book is by Anne Graham Lott, another book that's on my TBR for this month, and it's the Jesus, sorry, it's called Jesus and Me, Experiencing the Holy Spirit as a Constant Companion, and um, yeah, I already have this book um, broken into parts, two days worth of reading, um, because it's not that long, it's not that many pages, it's like less than 300 pages, um, it's 200 and something pages, and, um, it just sounded like a really good book, I went through the chapters, and it just, comfort a counselor, friend, it all, it's all about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and, um, who wouldn't want to know about that, and, in talking about the Holy Spirit as a companion, it doesn't talk about speaking in tongues, and the different gifts and things like that, that the Holy Spirit brings to us, so, yeah. Thought it would be great to read this one. Last book and last Christian nonfiction that I have to show you guys before I get into my fiction is um, Dear Children, sorry, Dear Grandchildren, This Is Me. And this, okay, so I thought this was going to be more of like a Christian nonfiction book or like a Christian fiction, honestly. But this is more of like a journal in which um, you answer certain things. For your grandchildren and i don't have any grandchildren i mean my son is only five years old so this would be great to keep in my collection for when my son is older and has his own children and then i could fill this out myself um or even if i have like nieces and nephews i could always like give this to them i, I mean it says their grandchildren but i could always figure something out but we have this book but that is it for the christian non-fiction so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this portion of the video because it's super long and I don't, it's, it's a lot of other books, like it's a stack of books here. So I'm going to end it here and then do a part two that has all of my Christian fiction, biblical fiction books to share with you guys. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, check out part two. And if not, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for thumbsing up this video. Comment if you have any questions. And um, if you are subscribed, click the little bell to stay notified and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.